how did you get into dance? Well, when I was very young, I took ballet classes, typical thing a little girl might do, but I also loved to run. I was a very fast runner and I loved to climb trees. And I used to have a lot of flying dreams. So I thought, well, I'd wrap that in a nice five pound note and <laughs> take me off in the canoe of life. So I did, I followed that dream. And and it's been it's been a good life. And where was this? Well, it began in New York City, Ooh, uh, okay. right next to the Empire State. I was born about a mile from the Empire State Building, and I grew up in that area, and uh, right at the edge of Greenwich Village. And you went to Juilliard. That's right. That's impressive. How did that happen? Well, <laughs> I tried out for my gym teacher advised I should try out, and I had not even heard of Juilliard at that point in my life, but I did try out and did a piece to Bach cello that I really liked a lot, and I guess I got their goat, and they took me, <laughs> and after they took me, they ne I never let go. I, I made oh. that dream come true and graduated and continued on with my career. And where did you go after Juilliard? Well, in about 1965, I had an opportunity to be the head of the dance division at, in the, at the Fairmont School of the Creative and Performing Arts near Cleveland, Ohio, actually Coventry. And that's where my very beginning started as far as, in my mind, what would be my career. And I was able to invite five other dancers and we were all on payroll for the year. Ah. We all got paid very good salaries, and it was a wonderful year. You were performing or teaching? Both. Oh. Both doing uh, workshops with elementary school children and uh, performances and creating our own things. So it was a combination, but felt very good. It was a very healthy lifestyle. Oh. Well, uh... <clears throat> That involved teaching. Right. And um, did you know at the time you got into dance that uh, teaching would be something you would be doing? Well, from, from an early age, I always enjoyed communication with others. And I didn't specifically think I would be a, quote, dance teacher. But, <laughs> but when, it, when that came along, I began to enjoy it more and more, especially after I began studying the body and scientifically analyzing how a body can move in a healthy way and unhealthy way and uh, various diseases that attack the body and how to combat them. So uh, that, that all was a very good <clears throat> direction to be in. And uh, from Juilliard and from that situation, the money ran out after one year. So I applied for other jobs and then I got a job at Boulder, Colorado. And that was also teaching. That's right. Okay. And so now I'm developing the craft of teaching more and more. But I always enjoyed it. And I, don't, I can't visualize my life without it. In fact, <laughs> also economically, it was very important to have oh, sure. teaching sure. positions that you could rely on that would be there, you know, month to month, year to year. And, and so then you wound your way from Cleveland and Boulder, Colorado to Oregon? How to, did that well, yeah, well... <laughs> Kind of at the same time, but at that point in my life, we were looking for job gigs, and I was doing this mainly with Kim Arrow, who was a dance partner I had at the time, a male dance partner, and he had an MA and I didn't, so I just had a bachelor from Juilliard. Juilliard. That wasn't enough, so we needed his MA, so we would get positions based on that. And uh, so we did get the Boulder job and Washington University, Western Washington University. And then uh, after that, we were still performing, going back and forth to New York, came back. And then after that, I decided to break up with him and it was, I would be stronger and better alone, which, which did materialize. So I got my own MA and came down to Southern California, got that, and then decided from there, from my memories and explorations throughout the Pacific Northwest, I decided to pick a place that I would like to settle in <laughs> eventually. And don't forget, all of this travel was master planned and thought of ahead of time. And uh, although it was improvisational as it happened, I always wanted to be a gypsy and explore 
the United States and all the different peoples and places and cultures I've bumped into and thoroughly enjoyed them. Uh. <laughs> and I still do it again. And still, my sweetheart right here, John, <laughs> and I are going to get married yeah. and we are traveling in a beautiful trailer that's been re Fab for the both of us, and we're going to be. We're, we just came from the Tetons, and we're going to the Grand Canyon pretty soon. So we're we're planning our trips, and but that nature has always been a big draw for me, and was was the primary reason I left New York. Was that I could not stand <clears throat> the bricks and mortar anymore. I just wanted air, sure, especially sure. clean air and clean water. Were on my mind when I left. That was 1975. Well, uh, say a little about uh, the studio we're sitting in. Yeah, well, when my first husband, Steve, and I moved here, my first husband was a composer and accompanist at UCLA, but he was mainly a composer and he wanted a place to compose. So this was his birthplace. This studio that we're sitting in was designed as a, a recording studio for music, and it has very good acoustics being a five-sided building <clears throat> and having the triangles are there because they absorb two, I don't know if you can see them in the camera, no, but they absorb sound and it was too echoey by the time we finished, so they helped absorb sound. But anyway, it was built for mainly for him, but I figured, well, while he was doing it, I'd kick my two cents in and put in a dance floor just in case. And sure enough, it, it did work out that he, he enjoyed it for about eight years and then passed away. From cancer, and then I continued with the dance aspect of it. But that was uh, uh, Eugene Dance Studio, which is an right. instructional. Uh, right. Right, and and you weren't just teaching dance; you were teaching choreography as yes. well. Yes. Yeah. I, I've always loved teaching. My first love is teaching choreography, ah. and it's even more interesting to me than to actually make my own piece. I find it fascinating to deal with the human mind and how it creates things from its unconscious or conscious mind and evolves into a beautiful piece. So I'm, I've always loved it and not done it all throughout my life, but there are pieces that were created in the studio for, for the youth and they're 13 to about 17 years old and they're all on my website, eugmoderndance.com. And there's a lower level of videos. There's an upper level and a lower. It's on carousel. Anyway, I, I adore watching them every once in a while because they're so full of inspiration and positivity in our world that we're in now. So we need that. And so you've worked with youth. You've worked with uh, people who want to learn to be choreographers. Right. Um, and you've also worked with people who are um, beyond athletic that yeah. are maintaining health and, and uh, things of that sort through movement. Uh, right. Say a little about that. Yeah, well, I'm offering a class for seniors, that is senior, people who are seniors who would like to dance, and I'm going to be do, offering that class. In fact, October 1st will be the first class in choreography. And the classes that I teach are all designed for the elder population <clears throat> for the mature adult. And they're all on my website. One is an intermediate class for people who have had some experience. And that's on Monday. And then the one on, the one on uh, Wednesday, will, <clears throat> sorry, Saturday, will be for seniors, just a, an ordinary dance class for seniors, an hour, hour long, 12 to one. And then the choreography will come after that. And I'll do it for two months, October, November. But I'm very excited to be teaching again in view of the pandemic we've been through, and the miseries and horrors. And that did kind of uh, shut of things down. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But I'm. But I'm. I have. I have a lot of hope and faith that we will. We will resurface and become whole again as a society. Right. So the the given that the pandemic is kind of. Uh, caused a pause on, on things, um, getting back into it with dance and choreography classes. Is that what you see as your contribution to Eugene? Yes, well I have, as you can see, a dance studio here and I really want to put it to use. 
And in my mind, the best use is to make it a place where creation can happen, where people can create their own dances and present them. And I can fit about 20 to 30 people comfortably in here and do informal performances. And I'm hoping to do that within Oregon, but anywhere in the world. You know, I, I am inviting artists from all over the world that have captivated me to come and do a low cost, <laughs> low, um, in, as far as audience goes, 30, 30 uh, person limit. And, but still could do workshops and stuff. If you're traveling through and you're mainly going to the Holt Center, you can stop by here and <laughs> have a soiree. Warm, warm up. Yeah. Have a soiree with yeah. some of the dance students in Eugene. Oh, that would, be, that would be fun. And it's a very cozy place here. I'm in the forest and uh, it's, it's a very not beautiful floor. Sprung wooden floor and great vib vibration. And light all the way around. Beautiful view out the windows. Skylights yes. and that kind of thing. So it's very, very good air quality, by the way. Well, how did uh, Court Yardley get involved in what you're trying to do? Yeah, well, Court Yardley was an, an internet site I came across on LinkedIn, and I found I found the site and Mr. Kill very, very warm and inviting. And uh, gradually, <clears throat> as I'm nearing kind of the end of where I wouldn't say the end but I'll say another uh, evolutionary stage <laughs> Matt age appropriate, I, age appropriate. Yeah. I bumped into him and we hit it off very well and you know I'm I what I really want to offer here through him is a center where people can choreograph have their pieces acknowledged by each other and recognized by their family and friends and that sort of thing and have it grow very possibly and offer dance classes and I do have a wonderful yoga teacher who is here and uh, she's going to start the classes next week Monday, Wednesday and Saturdays and that's Deborah Powers, fantastic so, teacher. So you have uh, uh, a space here that is available for other teachers right. to do their thing, yes, or yes. Uh, maybe uh, somebody who's just coming through and wants to do a house concert, as it were, for right. dance or music. Right, or um, music, right. Uh, you've yes. had performers here uh, playing instruments. Right, yes. So uh, yes. Uh, it's, uh, it is a performance space, uh, intimate setting in a beautiful woods. Uh, right, right, and for low discounted cost. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Uh, anything else you want to add to the, your, your view of the future? Well, <laughs> yeah. So I would say to young students who are in dance now, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> It'll get better. And I don't think it's been, well, in some ways, being closed in and having to use video, actually, I think has inspired a lot of dancers or closet dancers. To come out with their creativity and I've come across many many incredibly vi uh, great video performances of dance internationally not just in modern but in all forms and I really think these last two years have promoted that in as a positive of course there's a great negative that happened the shutdown and being isolated but sometimes the isolation and shutdown can lead to bigger and better things. And I think when we all finally do emerge, it'll be earth-shaking, <laughs> earth-shattering, and it already is. I can feel the energy bubbling over in everyone. Everyone's just so enthusiastic and ready to go. And Eugene is a beautiful place to do it in. <laughs> so I extend the invitation to come here if you are on the map at all, and uh, even to chit chat or, you know, Blow the breeze, as sure. they say. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, and uh, check us out on Courtyardly.